All right, so I'm told that there's a new campaign in the United States. Uh, they've asked parents to sign a pledge not to give their kids a smartphone before eighth grade or second form. We ask you, at what age or grade would or did you give your child a smartphone and why? So Diana Henry Green says, my child is 12 and she has a smartphone, but I limit her usage and monitor most of what she uses it for. It's also a great way for kids to be informed and it helps with homework and schoolwork as well. So for me, it's a great thing to have, but teach them the responsibility that comes with the device. And Tonette Fancy Face Thompson's, I get, Thompson, I gave my daughter a smartphone when she was 13, only because she was a hard worker in school. She was and is still respectful and show high levels of responsibility. Good parenting does amount to good kids, okay? And Nors Redna Asinon, Asinom. I believe that once children become teenagers, they should be able to have a smartphone for important use. They should not be grown up like how our parents and grandparents grew us. Many of us grew up very dark. We were not exposed to many things and up until now, it makes some of us very dark and illiterate. Parents who can afford it should uh, allow their kids to have a smartphone. It is a way of communication far and near, giving information from a far distance. If kids are far away from home, they can always make a quick call or a quick text message to say where they are. Many will not agree, but I wish when I was growing up, it was like, no, I would not have one, but two smartphones. <laughs> there you go, um, Shushan Hibbert. But I, uh, at the end of grade five, because she did well, but I took it back and gave her a banger. <laughs> she was not using it wisely. Too much idle talks and bad influence. She'll get that back when she passes GSAT for one of the top three pick schools. Otherwise, it'll be up for sale. <laughs> Jai Barkley. My son is four and he has a smartphone because he don't know the banger once. I gave him and he was sliding it, but it has these games and education apps for when I'm too bothered to lend him my phone. I'll read one more and then I'll go across the sim. My stance, a child should not have a smartphone. I will not give my kids smartphones until they're 18, 16. If responsible, I will load them a tablet. I'll download educational material. I will not leave them unattended on the internet because they use the computer too. If I need to contact them, I give them a banger, says Tanisha Fluffy Body Thomas. <laughs> Sim? <laughs> okay. Lots of views there, guys. Um, we're going to go through them now with Dr. Carolyn Jackson, who is the Executive Clinical Director of Caribbean Tots to Teens. Good morning. Good morning. We were laughing at some of those. <laughs> but a range of, of issues and a range of feedback from um, different parents, ranging from your kids going to grow up dark to, mm -hmm. you know, they're learning, they're being enlightened by the tablet. Where do you weigh in on this? Well, the issue about smartphones and kids, really, it's the smart in the smartphone that is the concern. Nobody will debate that in this day and age. It is good for your child, depending on if you have complex pickup arrangements or whatever, to have a phone. The question is, do you want a phone that is internet or Wi-Fi connected? So, in other words, do you want to give your child the right to get online with no restriction at any time? Right. So, it's really a technology question. And I do think that with every other privilege, there must be some clear rules and responsibilities that the child understands. And certainly, early teenage is a good time, first form, second form, third form for the average child to be able to take on the smartness of, of the, the smartphone. smartphone because the truth of the matter is some of those phones are much smarter than we are. And um, so that is a good age for them to understand because you're looking at some important issues, privacy, mm -hmm. bullying, mm -hmm. whether you are the bully E or the bully R, Correct. how to manage that social interaction and the impact it has on real relationships. Adolescence is a time where children are learning to relate independently among their peers as a gender group and with the other gender. And there's a lot of real creating. social, not yes. fake social. Real social. Yeah, because a lot of these kids who, who play in this social space mm -hmm. do not understand 
real social right. interaction. Some of the downsides that um, we've seen presented, there's one that jumps out at me um, when I read about anxiety and self-esteem and, mm -hmm. and studies that show that some kids who have smartphones are more prone to suicide. This is actually true. It has been shown for both kids and adults that the more time you spend on social media, the less likely you are to be satisfied with your own life. And people a lot of times don't understand that what you see is curated. The, the average person will take the time. Does not wake up looking like that. To put up what is delightful and leave out the real part of life that, um, that many of us just don't want to share or don't mm -hmm. want in the public space. So there is much to be said for having a positive and happy outlook. But to be at that age where you can recognize that all the joy and happiness and success that you're seeing is not the fullness of life. There's so much more. But we definitely know more so with girls than the boys that there is a big impact with uh, how many likes are on your selfies, mm -hmm. how many persons respond. Uh, girls are a lot more sensitive to it. And it does have an impact on those girls who may be um, struggling with, with, with their issues. social That's frightening. interactions. So they look and they see all these pretty girls with things they don't have right. or and they say, mommy, can I get this or daddy, can I get this? You feel left out, you feel like you're not really in with the in crowd and then you get depressed. It can lead to several things. What about the, the, the parents who will say, um, I'm giving in because all the other kids they know have one. So it's less about the smartphone and more about my facilitating how it's used through infrastructure. Right. I can be smart with it too as a parent of so that course. my child smartly uses it. So, of course, if the parent is carefully monitoring, there were a couple of the comments on, that we read where you could see that parents were on top of it, they were informed, they know about controlling, parental controls on the phone, and they've obviously had a conversation with their child and it's an ongoing conversation but there's a definite element of control that parents must consider mm -hmm. does the child go to bed with the smartphone i mean i know one father who all of his children plug their phone into a power strip beside his bed when they're going to bed so there's no up all night to mm -hmm. researching mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that which ought not to be researched and um that is one of the ways that he controls how much use because eat sleep and exercise are still the, the pillars of physical health yes and real relationships are the pillars of psychosocial health okay and the phone does not contribute much to any of those correct and so your so your final word because i'm being given the wrap to parents <laughs> what would you say to them as far as, as advice for the smartphone is it is it about monitoring for a specific amount of time per day or what would your general advice be I think the parents still need to remember that they are in control. So you're going to talk about how much time they can spend on the phone. Talk about bullying, your child being a bully and your child being bullied and how they respond to that. Talk to them about what to do if they see something inappropriate. Talk, the number one thing that prevents children from sending self-nude pictures is if their parent tells them, do not send a nude picture so the words need to come out yeah. of the parents mouth parents need to be informed and share that information with their kids well, well, i'm gonna get hot when you send your picture a while ago um, you said the sweating. average child earlier yes but um some are kind of different some can handle it a little bit earlier than others um well, when, you, when you say the average child Definitely you will see how your child functions within their social group at school and in any class you will see the ones who are still a little more immature and in any class you will see the ones who are much more mature, mature. and it is really the parent who needs right. to make that decision and see how the child's real life social interactions are going. Have you met their real life friends? Do you know their friends' parents? What type of activities do they participate in the real world? Okay. And that will be a guide All to right. how to make that. We're going to read some more. Maybe Sim could come over and join me when she's ready. All right. So this is Tracy and Anderson. My daughter got hers at five. Mm. She likes taking pictures and video talking with her aunties, dad and grandma who are far away. Have an issue with that? No, but you don't have to have a smartphone to do that. All right. <laughs> um, Patricia White says, how about a smart book? Pick enough if you have no smartphone. <laughs> All right, Latoya Stewart, I would say when he reaches ninth grade, before that, maybe a simple one to keep in contact.
Kadian Mullins, my child, got it as a gift for doing well in GSAT. No? That's a very popular thing, to get a smartphone as a gift for doing well in GSAT. If you have had the conversation with your child, then you can go ahead. But it, it's, it is a bit young right. for the child to take it on. With the whole transition of first form and all the other issues, a smartphone doesn't need to be one okay. of them. Gosh, just in case, it's age 13. Yes. Sorry, Sim, you were saying? No, go ahead. Um, just in case, age 13. Reason she was starting high school and I wanted to keep in touch. I regretted it though. Kind of. Interesting. Well, Justin, I'm sorry you didn't tell me why you regret it, um, but I guess that's probably personal. Um, all right, so we're going to have, what is his name? Wait a minute. Instagram. All right, um, phenomenal empress. Eh? College, when they are responsible. <laughs> okay. Um, Sim, what is that one? I don't know how to pronounce that. What is that? Um, Rick, underscore Rick. Eight sixteen. A bang at all. <laughs> These kids nowadays use phones for all the wrong reasons. We can't stop them from looking at and doing stuff, but we can limit the devices they use. Hence, they're getting a banger. Um, black educated beautiful. After they leave high school at age 17, 18, they can save and buy a smartphone. Once they have monitored access to a, a home computer and a tablet, weekends only, um, and I'm able to access them via the school's telephone, they do not need a smartphone. Mm -hmm. All right, mm -hmm. Cheryl G2K, when they are getting good grades in school and know how to spell smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, then. All right, that's it. So that's the, the last one. Thanks, guys, for, for being a, a part of this. So, Doc, you're just saying about second, third form. Second, third form. It's a, it's a good age for them to understand the responsibility. Okay. All right. Thanks, Doc. Appreciate it. Um, Dr. Carly Jackson, Executive Clinical Director at Caribbean Tots to Teens. Um, that's it. We'll take a break. We'll be right back with more.